I started out on own to make clothing differently. Our jeans are made at the most, the world's cleanest. Our jeans are made at the world's cleanest denim factory using less water, fewer chemicals, and I forget the last part. Organic cotton. <laughs> I started out on, we're fucked. I started out on own to make clothing differently. Our jeans are made at the world's cleanest denim factory using less water, fewer chemicals, and organic cottons. We guarantee C jeans for life. Now your most comfortable jeans are also your most sustainable. C jeans, social environmental accountability. Get yours at outerknown.com. Imagine if your life was a movie, you were directing it. What would you do? After all this time, three decades of professional surfing, we raised that footage from yesterday. <laughs> Walking through all these different walks of life, I almost want people to experience this story that I've had. Watch this left right here. Tomorrow, it literally could have the waves of the year. Tahiti's just always been one of those places that is special. It's at the top of a surfer's list of place to go, and but it's just an intense place. You feel that energy, the big, huge valleys in the background, and the mist in the air, and and the sound of the waves breaking. event at first and then it became a world tour event and we didn't actually even know at that time whether you could surf it guys had seen it really giant and scary but figured that it was too gnarly to surf and then and there was one day in the contest when it got just crazy huge and guys were like really going for it and got to see that this is a wave like no other you pull up look we're 40 yards away from wade carmichael taking off on one right now ones that break further out aren't as gnarly as the ones that miss it and move inside and they get really square and gnarly. The best thing in any lineup, of course you want to jump in the water and get a good wave, but you have to build up some kind of trust with people in, in any walk of life and I think surfing is one of the most obvious spots where that happens. And at Chopo you, you have to be comfortable with all that energy, the danger of getting hurt. Honestly, most of the bad injuries happen on small days because the reef's so shallow then. end of the road is really now built around surfing even though it wasn't originally it was just kind of like the road ends now they have this crazy magical wave out there and 
it just happens to be at the furthest extent of where the road goes to. Two thousand, oh three, oh five, eleven, sixteen. Good job, Dad. What the fuck happened all those other years? <laughs> what was I doing those other years? Sleeping? I had a good run. Sixteen year span there. If I could win one next year. It'll be a 20 year span. It'll be fun. I need to win a contest in 2022. It'll be a 30 year span of winning contests. I don't think that's going to happen. I'll be too tired. And I don't think I'll win one anyways. But you never know. The town is just very basic. I mean, there's just a few places to eat and it's mostly homes and big properties. Little freshwater streams coming out. And a lot of those, I think those freshwater streams are what has created the channels and the reefs out there on what would be like an atoll outside the, outside the beach. I would consider a Romano-like family. He's one of the only friends I have that only FaceTimes me. He never calls me. It's never a phone call. It's just a FaceTime. He wants to see you. Brother, let's talk. Ramon is like an unspoken mayor of Chopu. I mean, Chopu is his world, uh, in the water. I'm sure they have a mayor on land, but he's not concerned about that too much. It's funny, because Ramon is so chill and kick back, but he's also intense. Papa, are you okay now? Okay. Where can I hug? You can't hug. No, no, no. Don't touch the back. Bro, that wave was amazing. Thank you. I know you got another one, but the one I I was just looking at my boy going, get out. You looked like you were cruising out. And all of a sudden the wave said, no, come this way and get slammed by two houses and go to the hospital. This wave's gnarly, dude. You have to, when you come out of those tow winds, you gotta go up, huh? You, you have to, I tried. you have to. Oh, like I saw the video from the beach. Like from the, oh, my angle, bro. come on. Yeah, the angle. What, looking down at it? He's angled. A little bit. I was on the double decker of Sydney's boat, Matahi's boat. I was so small next to it, I was like, ooh, better make it clear. that you could die out there on a big day, for sure. I mean, there's just too much speed and energy. And if you hit the reef wrong, if nothing else, you can just chew your whole body up. I saw it happen to Romana through two tow vests and a spring suit. You have to be comfortable with that energy. There's uh, a lot of guys on tour that haven't spent the time there. You can see just how vicious Chopo is as that wave tubes on down the lines. For me personally, I'm not gonna go out in the heat and go, he hadn't spent time here, I'm gonna win this heat. That has nothing to do with it. It's a different animal, for sure. Ramana parks the furthest out, and that's so that he can see which waves are coming from the top of the boat, and he can call to his surfers. And everyone knows it. Even the guys who are against you in a heat, and there's certain whistles that mean a certain thing, and, and, and he expects you to have put the time in so that you understand where on the reef he's trying to tell you to go. You've got to get super deep. They're too quick. The big yeah. ones are too, too quick. Over. That's exactly right. You've got to get those big size ones to get the chip in. The and difference between a shit. nine and a five five is like two feet. Yeah. Exactly. Clock's just started for the final heat of this round of 32. Kelly Slater versus Jack Freestone. Slater deep on the reef. Pulls in, comes through that first section. No problem for Kelly Slater. A mere mortal surfer would have no chance at that barrel, but Kelly Slater making it look easy in challenging conditions. Jack Freestone's opening up his account against Kelly Slater in a nice roomy barrel. <laughs> and he likes it as well. No hands, pull straight in. That was a beautiful way for Jack Freestone. Looking at the 6-5 for Kelly Slater. Got to be better than that, I would think. Wait, wait, wait. 
Well, it spits and he's already on the shoulder. I don't know how they gave it a nine. I mean, it didn't matter. He already won the heat. I feel less pressure when I'm against somebody I expect to do good, you know? It's a weird thing. But what do you mean you feel like the pressure's all on him? Because you're the one who has to perform? Well, just because I've done well here so many times and he hasn't done well, so no one really, like, the expectation is not that, like, Jack's going to do, be, like, the hard guy to beat, you know? I sort of feel the same way I did after the first contest this year right now. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I know I got out of that pretty quickly and started relaxing and enjoying myself. Really hoping to nail a good result here, you know, it's historically been one of my best events on tour and a little bit of a tough pill to swallow. It sucks. <laughs> you kind of live and die by the sword, you know, it's like you feel great when you win and you you can feel awful when you lose, especially when you feel like those conditions should suit your strengths. I haven't quite processed it all yet. It's like, I'm so excited to do well in this contest, so I put a lot of value on this result more than others, you know. So that's probably the hard thing. The surf pod. My design, my new design. Uh, I'm drawing it now because I just recently kind of got the real like idea, the whole picture of like how the design would work in my head. And I recently surfed the wave that, that kind of solidified that idea in my head. And then I think here in the near future we'll really have 
access the different technologies to make any kind of wave design we want. I started out and own to make clothing differently. Our jeans are made at the most, the world's cleanest. Let me start from the, a little bit of the history. Is we, we didn't start off at Outer Known making any denim, any jeans, because it's really dirty. So we found a place in Vietnam that is the, the cleanest denim maker in the world. And I just had this idea, let's just surf in jeans, and it kind of represents the clean water. You know, it's sort of a symbol of that. That's the message we were trying to get across. So I just thought, yeah, I can just surf in jeans and get a nice barrel or something. So we filmed a whole bunch of stuff underwater. We were concerned that we wouldn't be able to get the shot because there's always so many people at Chopu and so many cameras, and especially any day the waves are going to be good. So we didn't have the footage we needed, even close to what we needed to try and finish this commercial for Outer Known. We packed up and left Chopu for, we thought we were just going to go and be gone. And the next day we get a phone call, Chopu was like, 10 feet and firing. Maybe there's some waves that are like too big to paddle and there's no one out. Our one friend Cowley was uh, out in the water by himself. The one behind it. The one behind this thing. Woo! Woo! Hey! You gotta do this with the pen. Oh, oh. You gotta do this with the pen, brother. Oh. I think it's a, uh, it's gonna be eight solid foot right now for Kelly. Three, two guys out. Two guys out. And I think Kelly's gonna score. All I know, it's Kelly's day. It was, it was last couple of days, was it WSL day? It's Kelly's day. There's a part of it. It was one of those things that was meant to be. It wasn't the sunniest, most perfect day, but you know, the wave that I got, a little toe in on a, you know, like an eight foot wave at Chopua with a, just a, it was perfect. Just really perfect day. So I don't think it could have been much better than that. But it's nice and open, like good direction. Wind is perfect. Where'd everyone go? I don't know, everyone went home. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. The deep one. I dropped a couple spots down to 10th. I'll probably stop thinking about it as much now. My goals would be just to relax and just surf like I surf. I'm not on the same journey I was at 20. I would surf here again for probably the foreseeable future. If I, you know, if I don't choose to compete next year on tour, I'd still love to have a wild card here. Yeah, everybody's happy. It's different if you have goals or if you want to have no stress whatsoever. I mean. A certain level of stress is good because it motivates you. It's just too heady. I think I got too much shit going on in my life. Is there a fix for that? Yeah. 
sell everything and buy a boat. <laughs> and then what? Just sail around Tahiti and get really good waves for a couple of years. Oh, that storm's weird. No one's getting out of here on Sunday, Monday. Fernando worked really hard to get it in the Olympics, and now we're there. As far as whoever wins a gold medal in surfing, they'll quickly be the most well-known surfer in the world. You know, just out of respect, you can just go see the right people, get their blessing on where you surf. We named a way that we never surfed, actually. <laughs> That's what the spirit of the Olympics is, is, to bring all the different countries together. Oh my gosh, a barrel wave right there. What the? Team USA and Team Brazil won a pace. Oh.